Hey everybody, Tyler Edlin here, illustrator, concept artist, and instructor. And so what I'm going to do uh, for the next few videos is I'm actually taking one subject, and that is shadows, part of color and light. I'm breaking it down into three parts, and I'll release these videos every few days. The first part will be talking about the types of shadows and what makes up a shadow. The second part will be going over some uh, examples and techniques, and in the third part I'll be going over a demonstration. So let's begin. Now let's go over first uh, what exactly makes up uh, the parts of a shadow. So think of this like the anatomy of a shadow. Now I don't think doing a, an example and, a, and even a demonstration in value, you know, black and white, will be the best way to showcase this. Uh, particularly the first component here, and that first one is a local color. So imagine the innate or the default color of any given object in the world or universe. Copy paper is white. Fire trucks are red. Taxis are yellow, right? But if you shine different lights on those particular objects, right, the color is going to change. The shadow is going to change as a result of that. But the first real kind of component we need to figure out, calculate our shadows, is a local color. So we're just going to start with this kind of skin tonish color here to get us going. Now, again, to really showcase this next point, what we need to do is drop this sphere, which is, again, affected by no light whatsoever, because we do need light to show what shadow is doing. So here we're going to add a little bit of environment with a, a cooler light source coming in from the upper left. And now that second one becomes, once we have our object, our local color object, whatever that may be, it can be anything in an environment. It could be outside, could be inside. It has to exist somewhere. So this actually makes up the ambient light. And so that's showing, right, if we have this uh, shadow area here, which this core shadow in our example here is making up for like, you know, 90% of the sphere, what is going into that? Well, we have a little bit of that default local color. And often what the core mistake with this is when finding a shadow of a local color, typical person, what they're going to do is if you see the color selector over here, they're just going to drop the value like that. It's essentially kind of like adding black into it. So it's shading it. So this is what I most commonly see from students. Oh, well, this is the shadow version of this, right? If no matter how kind of dark you want to go, it's kind of usually some variation of this, right? So we, we know which way the light's going. We know where the shadow is. That is usually by default what a student typically uh, thinks and tries to do. It's like a darker version of that color. And while they're not entirely wrong, it can get a little bit more juicy than that, a little bit more uh, deep. So what, what I try to do is, again, bring in some of that environment, right? That's what really starts bringing uh, things a little more interesting. So I make that base default color a little bit darker, but I start adding in little subtle bits of these neutrals around it. That's blues, that's greens, whatever actually is making up the environment. And I bring that into the shadow. So that shadow becomes a, a combination of those two different colors, already kind of making it feel more dynamic. So at this stage, with the ambient light, and, the, and you can really see it coming in on the back here, the, the last major part of the you know, the equation here would be the reflected light. So let's say if the ground, for example, is a little bit warmer, right, we could see uh, some of that light coming and bouncing in and underneath it. So right here we have the, the major kind of components. We have the key light coming in right here. All of this is the shadow. We can see the fill light coming in. The deeper part of the shadow here, that's, that's the core shadow. Then we get the bounce light coming in. And that's really what makes up, uh, for the most part, most shadows that are particularly set up in environments. Now, if we want to look at all of this in context, let's look at this great kind of watercolor painting here by uh, Rahesh here. So look at what his shadows are doing. There is actually all kinds of colors going on. You see these blues in the deeper parts of the shadow. That's because the environment's blue. Right, we have the, the sunlight with a blue atmosphere, so you see lots of blues coming in. But if you know if the shadow is taking place on parts of the green and uh, dirt, I'd imagine, right, you're going to see parts of those colors, greens, very earthly uh, colors, making their way into the shadow. So the shadow is actually fairly dynamic. 
All right, so moving forward, here's our uh, example again. Let's look next at the two types of shadows. So we looked up what is making up a shadow. Let's look up the two different types of shadows. The first one is a form shadow. So this is going to look differently depending on the shape or the form of whatever object we're talking about, whether it's like a rectangle or in our main example here, a sphere. It's just how that light travels around it or over it. So of course with a sphere, right, we're going to see it very gradual, like a gradient wrapping around the object. But with objects with harder surface, you're going to see clean shifts of that, that color and that value light, medium, and dark in this particular case. And so a form shadow just basically shows us what is the shape of an object we're looking at. Now, the, the next type of shadow is a cast shadow. So let's just assume there's some kind of object interrupting that light coming down, and we could see now that cast shadow getting uh, cast right onto the sphere. Now, depending on how close an object is to uh, another object, where it's interrupting that light, that will dictate how hard or soft that edge actually is. So when it's really close, you'll see a pretty firm edge. But when it's much further away, you're going to see it quite a bit softer. And so what is nice about an example like this is that we have soft transitions on the form shadows and harder transitions here, uh, or a harder edge on this part of the shadow. And that all makes it feel fairly dynamic when you can kind of switch gears up like that and when you create situations that can feature both types of shadows. All right, let's look at a great example here from Sam Nielsen. Now this kind of shows everything we just talked about, right? We have this flying whale going on. We could see how round it is coming in here. You know, so that's a form shadow, right? It's really light and it gradates to a shadow. We could see a little bit of the blue light from the clouds coming in on the bottom. Now this cloud is obscuring the light coming in from the upper right. So we see a, a fairly soft shadow casting, uh, being cast from the out of uh, view cloud. And we can also see that you know, the whale itself is kind of casting this shadow on the cloud. So it's kind of toppling over. You can see parts of the background cloud in here. They're in shadow as well. And another great place to observe this, see the uh, wing, or the fin, rather, of the uh, whale. That's casting this very nice and subtle, delicate cast shadow on the body, right? It's that nice little hard line. And then it, it gets lost into this softer area here, right? It's one, two. It's form shadow, cast shadow. So again, that's one thing you always want to ask yourself when you're figuring out a particular area of your character, your environment, whatever it may be, is am, am I trying to show a cast shadow or a form shadow? The last and perhaps the most important thing we need to address next, uh, because it makes up such a large part of our shadows, is color temperature. Now, if we understand anything about lighting so far, it's that uh, there's usually two distinct families of uh, light and dark. Colors also have two distinct families as well, and that is warm and uh, cool. All right, there's warm and there's cool colors. We can divide the color wheel almost right in a half to kind of find where that point of transition is. Now, this can be a little bit more tricky because there is no way to really measure a color's temperature. We can always draw that clear line between what's light, what's shadow, and classify the two. But with temperature, it's far more subtle. And really, this is strictly because color temperature always relies on context. There's quite a bit more subtlety to it. Now, if we look again at this uh, color wheel, the warm and the cool colors, they're actually complementary. That means they're at opposite ends of the color wheel. And the major thing to observe here is that colors are always in transition. They're in transition from one color to the next, constantly moving. So like, for example here, if we are picking this pink color, what we may want to ask ourselves when we're when we're considering it for an image from a painting is it is it moving closer toward the cool colors or are we going to pick a color that's closer moving toward the warms? So when we're considering colors uh, for selection, we really want to know is is it a warm or a cool version of that color? Right here's just a basic generic red, not really enough information. But see, once we make a few uh, subtle transitions, we can have a cooler version of that red, and we can certainly go in a uh, warmer version of that red as well. So see, here's a very neutral red, a cool version, and a warm version. We can 
always transition one way or the other. So to conclude this section, keep your color's temperature in mind. Now, are your light sources warm like the sun? Then have your shadows feel cooler in comparison. Are your light sources cool, like on our first example today? That's all right, then have your shadows feel a little bit warmer in comparison. I keep saying comparison because that is the context, and that's what color temperature needs. If you have warm on warm or cool on cool, you will get mud. You will get flat, lifeless, dull shadows. Your light source will dictate what direction your colors will move in for lights and shadows. So don't forget colors are always in motion and that they can bring your shadows to life. So remember everybody, color temperature is unmeasurable, it's contextual. It is also the key to dynamic shadows. See, this warm feels warm only because it's next to a cooler color. And it's the cooler color that definitely makes it feel warmer. Because when we put this next to a warmer color, it now feels cool in context. The same thing applies to cool colors as well. Any color can feel cool if it's next to a color that is warmer, like this blue and a neutral. Now take away that neutral and suddenly that color is the warm one in the conversation. And that's what this is at the end of the day. It's a conversation about the direction a color temperature is moving in. Let the colors live and breathe in your shadows. It's where they truly thrive. Your painting will lose a lot of life if you just shade by adding black to your colors. In the next part, we will look at some techniques through some professional examples, and then we will uh, compare that to some student examples and where some people commonly slip. And until then, folks, leave me any questions or feedback in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, and uh, have a great day. Thank you for checking out my video. You can support the channel if you'd like by subscribing, liking, or commenting on my videos. You can find me on the web on Facebook, ArtStation, and Instagram. Those are the social media outlets I utilize. I also teach two courses at the Computer Graphics Master's Academy, Architecture Design and the Fundamentals of Design. Feel free to check those out. Now if the classes aren't few, I also teach one-on-one. -on -one. Join the hundreds of students around the world for one-on-one -on -one learning and for more info just send me an email. Also, feel free to join the Brush Sauce Discord community. There's links below. It's fun. We do weekly hangouts. There's the challenges, and it's a great place to make friends. Take care.